my feet, for whatever reason, when I run and jump, after a while, the back of my heel starts hurting. And uh, every time I, you know, do any kind of activity, run or whatever, the next day, the next morning, a couple of hours, I'm barely getting out of bed, kind of struggling. So every Monday morning when I have to open, my associates ask me, Kelvin, what were you doing? You know, were you playing football or something? I'm like, uh-uh, uh-uh. I was praising God. And if, it, if it's the cross I must bear that my feet have to hurt, I'm going to give an opportunity every chance I get to, to praise ye the Lord. He's been so good. He's been so great. I can't just sit here and just walk around. i got to move my feet. i got to praise through the pain because he is worthy of all praise. So for five seconds, can I get somebody who can dance for me, who can lift up that feet and praise God for he is worthy. Thank you, Jesus, God. I glorify you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, for your spirit. I thank you for your word, God. I thank you for your move, oh God. In the name of Jesus, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. I believe there's healing in the house. I believe someone's going to get delivered. I believe God is about to move in this place. Now I only got five minutes, so let me jump into the word. If you have your Bible, can you turn to Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 3, and then we're going to jump down to verses 8 to 10. And the Bible declares, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And the five of them were wise, and five were foolish. And they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. And then if you jump down to verse 8, the Bible says, And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there not be enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. You might be seated. Praise the Lord. Of course, this is the parable of the ten virgins, and I thought it was pretty apropos since we just got done with the wedding, which was an awesome wedding. And the parable, of course, is talking about how these virgins had to have their lamps, and the lamps were going to help light their way when the groom or the wedding party marched to the feast. And so you had to make sure that, you know, you were ready. But the story does state that the uh, virgins went to sleep. All ten of them went to sleep, you know, because the groom was delayed. So they were awaiting. Now, the only difference between any of these virgins was their possession of oil. Every single one of them had a lamp. And when I study this, we liken the oil to represent uh, godly obedience uh, your walk with God, as it were. So the oil which was poured in helped to light their way. If you jump to Matthew chapter 5, verses 15 through 16, the Bible t- uh, talks about light that neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light shine before men that they may be see, uh, sorry, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So, you see, we must be saved. At the end of the day, if I'm drowned, I can't save somebody else from drowning. So, I got to be saved. I got to repent of my sins. I have to be baptized in the precious name of Jesus. And the word declares a promise that I shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And I must walk the walk of God. I must walk in his precepts and his principles. But you see that when I pour that oil in me to take care of my needs, a light is formed. And in my walk with God, others see this light and are drawn to God so when you walk a godly life it's not just about saving you but you shine a light that saves a lost world the lack of light see when you don't do the word of God when you're not falling in the obedience of God your light goes out and I understand that we have the cares of this world we have the cares of life and we get busy and when I was studying this and I was thinking about it at my store we recently had a huge audit 
And we didn't do a good job, quite honestly. And uh, it involved in, you know, checking up on paperwork and the daily tasks of stuff that needs to get done. And as a manager, you know, I'm sitting here saying, well, you know, corporate America, you know, corporate ladder people, there's a hundred of things you want me to get done. And so the things that I should have been checking, I didn't have time for it. And they said, I thought it kind of a biblical principle. They said, you don't have time not to do this. Church, let me tell you something. You don't have time not to walk with God. You don't have time not to go before him in prayer. You don't have time not to study your word. You don't have time not to come to the house of God. In closing, this parable pertaining to the church in the last days ultimately divides not the people who had a lamp or don't have a lamp, but it was those who had the oil. The Bible declares that many shall be called, but few shall be chosen. Who today will choose to fill up their lamp? Who today will decide that I'm going to push away the cares of this world and I'm going to get to an altar. I'm going to get before my God and I'm going to fill my vessel because it's not just me that I want to make it to heaven, but I want that light to shine. I want to bring a lost city, a lost world to heaven with me.